here is the skull. Now there's actually uh, two, only a, um, one movable joint in the skull. And uh, that's obviously at the, at the jaw. This is called the um, mandible. Uh, and the joint for that is way back here. Now, I'm just trying to get in the right position. Hold on. That, so on your skulls, which are the plastic anatomical skulls, uh, you can move that. On this one, you can't. And um, uh, in the, this is the ultimate goal of the assignment. So it's not necessary for you to um, dislocate this and, and carve it differently from the rest of the skull. So it's this jaw here with this kind of Cadillac wing that comes up like this, on like a 50s Cadillac, it comes down. And then underneath the, the, uh, the teeth, obviously the lower um, the row of teeth all the way to the other side. Now that, that pivot is right here at a very critical point of the skull. The back of the head or like this area we call the cranium. And there's several bones of the cranium that uh, you don't have to remember. You can all just think of this, this whole area as the cranium. And it's like this egg-like form that's big on this side and more narrow over here. So it almost becomes this, this uh, egg-like form that's very spherical here. It's, uh, it's, um, and then tapers and narrows towards the, towards the uh, forehead. Now there's, there's different bones. If you look at your own skull, uh, I mean the plastic one, not, not your, your own one under your skin, but the, the plastic one, you'll see like these little veins, these little veins that come through here and over through here. Those are called suture lines. Can you see those on your skulls? What's the name, say the name again? They're called sutures. And they're just, it's actually where plates of the cranium come together. So there'll be three plates of the cranium coming together and they start to weave, weave together into this little um, stitching that it looks like. Do you guys see that on your skulls? Yeah. So what it ends up is being, uh, there's, there's three bones that come together on the top. Um, you don't have to remember the names, but it's the parietal and, and the, the other parietal and the frontal. And, um, and then there's actually one in the back, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, occipital. And uh, those, are all, um, those are all Latin terms, so you don't really need to worry too much about it, but uh, that's what those, how, how it's fused together as it's growing in the womb. And they fuse together. And that's why right in that area where those three bones come together, you often get um, on infants, uh, you have a soft spot. And that's because the bones have, um, haven't fused yet. You may have noticed that uh, if you've been around infants. On the side of the, I like to break up this bone here, which is like this, it looks like a um, sunglasses or, or eyeglasses that comes around. This is called the, uh, the zygomatics. And, uh, there's a zygomatic bone all through here that ends here, um, but we'll just call this whole area the zygomatic, and and that's that's a you know again it's it's actually creating this outside apparatus where you're going to have your eyeball in here and then a big muscle on the side of your head that's called the temporalis muscle that's actually slides down this big muscle underneath here, so you get this opening. Now that opening we will eventually open. But, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But for now, as you're modeling this, uh, just, because of the, um, just because of the nature of the clay, it's really important that you don't open up this hole uh, uh, until almost the very end, because otherwise it'll dry and crack. So we just leave that filled with clay for most of the time we're working on this. So there's this, this empty space. So um, very often people will look at the skull and go, okay, you know, we have the big massive spot here and then we're gonna dig a hole here and we're gonna dig a hole here. And um, that's a, a very um, uh, misleading way of thinking of the, of the skull. You'll see these cavities, but it's very important that you build the whole thing in terms of its positive forms. And so we have this form with the cranium, the mandible, the zygomatics, and then up here we have this bone which is several bones again, but we'll call this the, uh, the maxilla bone. And that's, uh, you know, there's a maxilla bone here, but we're gonna pull it all together in this kind of, this triangle right in through here. So this, this bone coming to the top of the jaw, we'll call the maxilla. So there's really only uh, uh, four forms that we, that we um, need to pay attention to, and that we can break up into separate forms. Um, 
have names that we'll refer to, uh, only because that's uh, they are significant for the functionality of the skull. And you know, this is the orbital, which is the orbital cavity where your eye is going to go. And you'll notice that deep down inside here, eventually you'll do this. You'll get down in there and you'll model all of this. And you'll see that there's actually uh, different forms on the inside of your skulls that really, if you pay attention to it um, as you're modeling, you'll get this, this deep cut all the way into the cranium. And this is where your nerves go from your eyeball into your brain. And so you, in a lot of ways, if you really want to pay attention to the, the beauty and complexity of the skull, these interior forms are really key to that because there's a sense of, of, um, of, of this complexity, this scullyness about it, where you have these interior forms. And the same thing with the nasal cavity in here. Um, it is, it is um, just as important to get these little interior forms. But this is, that's a little detail. And we'll talk about that probably next week about exactly how to accomplish that. But for now, we do want to just keep these uh, fairly solid. Um, and then uh, underneath the skull, uh, we're going to be taking this off. Well, you guys won't be able to do it, but I'll be able to do it because my clay is a little bit drier likely. But uh, underneath here, we'll see that this big hole right here is called the uh, foramen magnus. I think I got that right. Um, and it's where your, um, your uh, spinal column or your, your you know, your, your the, the, um, central nervous system kind of plugs in in there. And then you have, there's, there's a couple forms that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to here. These, this is the, um, the mastoid process, this big uh, lump. And you can feel this on your own, your own physical skull. You can feel underneath your ear, you'll feel the big bony bump. And uh, that's your mastoid process. It's a, where the big neck muscles are attached and they come down like this. Um, the other, uh, two forms are, are these forms here. And they're, they're um, forms where the top of your spine actually interacts. And um, the, that's significant because of the way the actual head pivots. That's where your head will pivot. You don't, you know, um, you'll notice that it's very uh, central to the, to the skull. It's actually, you know, the, if you put it on top of a, of a body, you'll notice that it, it, um, it's really very centered. That, may, that way you can kind of balance it very easily. If it was way in the back, you'd you know, have a lot of muscle power to keep your head up constantly. You know, and the same thing if it was closer to the front. So it's very balanced. And that, um, that is very significant because, it's, uh, because we are standing upright. And it's different if we did a little comparative anatomy to uh, skulls. I actually have a gear skull here. I could take a look at, where is it? Um, I can't reach it right now. Maybe later I'll pull it out. Um, but that's, that is significant about how it actually uh, fits into the rest of the body is that you should know that. Uh, maybe someday we'll do a uh, portrait and that will be something that's important to understand. Um, the other thing I had alluded to earlier was the idea that this is the pivot point for your skull and right behind or be, be, uh, the pivot point for your jaw and right behind that is a hole. Can you guys guess what that hole is? That's a, that's the, um, cavity. Can, what do you think that is? It's your ear hole. Right? And what we have all through here is a, um, you have the zygomatics that are coming back towards your ear hole. And uh, look at where that's located. It's located here. And then there's the pivot for your head. Do we, where is the sense of balance? Do you guys know where the sense of balance is? In the middle of the ear. Yeah, it's your ear. Your ear senses the senses uh, your balance. It's your your uh, accelerometer in there. It's um, and look at how closely it is to that pivot point. And that's significant because um, when you look at the entire body, you'll notice that the whole body is centered uh, from a plumb line from that point, from that ear, and from the top of that uh, that skull. You can drop a tr plumb line on an individual, drop it straight down to the center of your foot, and that gives you a uh, upright standing person. So that is significant where that, um, that, that the ear is located. And normally when this is standing up, uh, you know, and, and as a face, you'll notice that that's very close to the center of the head um, in terms of width or depth, I should say. Uh, and so those are some of the anatomical things you might want to know about the skull as we're modeling it. Right, you guys have any questions about that before I move on? Let's do a little bit of work here on on, um, on my skull. You'll notice that I've modeled it. And you, you saw in the video, I got it to this spot in the video. 
So none of this should be um, new to you, but there's a couple things that I wanna start working on. The first is I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about how I might kind of construct this through planes. And I asked you guys earlier to um, possibly get a, um, a kitchen knife or a, uh, a butter knife would be useful. Uh, I'm just gonna use my flat uh, wood tool and, and I wanna talk about uh, building this through planes. And, and there'd be a couple planes here that are, that are obvious and others that maybe you, you haven't noticed. The first thing I like to do on the skull is uh, create, the, in, in terms of face, a, what I call the, the Darth Vader. Let me see if I can't get this more in the frame. This is called the Darth Vader triangle. You remember from the way Darth Vader has this kind of nose and this whole squared up section all through here. And there's a top and it comes down like this, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so we can, what we can actually do is break this entire complexity, all this complex stuff down into one plane. And the reason that is important is when we're talking about simplification is that if you can see past complexity in a, in a really complex subject matter, whether it's the human figure or a landscape or anything else, you're, you're, uh, an artist is very often looking for simplicity in these things. And a plane is, is, a, um, is often used to, to take a very complex uh, line and, uh, and uh, unify it. And, it. and it goes to a sense of, a sense of uh, creating a, um, a unified core or a unified sensibility to your work. The essence of composition is, um, is two things. It's unity with variety and variety with unity. Those two things. And, what it, and the way to accomplish that very often is to look for uh, the, you know, the, nature is infinitely variable. And um, one of the things that humans do very well is look for patterns in the world. And those patterns um, can be thought of as really as simplifications. And when you simplify things like this, um, the reason why that's important to human, human comprehension is that we can grasp much bigger ideas, much bigger uh, um, thoughts if we don't have to uh, get stuck in, in too much detail. Uh, and then we can, but if you st get stuck in detail, in too much detail, you kind of get mired in it. So if I take that, that plane and you can see I'm starting to construct another one. This is the front of that, uh, that cheekbone or the zygomatic, which is here. Right? And then we could take another plane, bring it all together. I'm actually gonna obliterate some of the work I did so that you can see how I got there. And I'm just gonna work for a little bit and I'll, I'll talk over myself. Is this making anything clear for you? Notice what I'm doing is I'm taking the side of the tool and, and almost flattening that area. And I'm kind of bringing all this around and going here. I'm not going underneath that form yet. I'm just flattening it. Then I might come underneath, cut a, a line. And I'm, I'm almost bringing the same plane all the way back. And then cutting it. Up underneath, right? Don't, don't get in too much detail. Just really focus on the composition of it. Uh, yes, that's the that's very much the uh, the lesson I'm trying to to teach. But also that um, very often, and for you to understand these forms, you can look for those planes um, in a way of of um, in a way of uh, unifying them and simplifying the ideas and. Um, and again, seeing past the detail.
Now up here, you know, you could turn this into a series of planes, but because there's um, not much going on up here, uh, I don't find that that's terribly useful, but you could do it. You know, maybe there's a plane that, that breaks through here and like that, but I would suggest just transitioning into a convex. Okay, go ahead, what's that? I'm saying it would pick up. I'm sorry, your your audio was breaking up quite a bit. I was saying the plates on top of the cranium uh -huh. they can, that you can um, put in, right? Yeah, um, here's the thing is that what I'm not doing is necessarily um, uh, breaking up those uh, those specific forms into a um, separate uh, items. I'm saying uh, I wanted to show you those that anatomy so that you understand what you were looking at from an anatomical point of view. Uh, but eventually, like in this case, I'm bringing the entire uh, maxilla, right, and mandible uh, together. Um, and, and I'm also bringing this form down and kind of closing this up so that you can see the direction of this, this orbital and how far back in space it comes, right? And then it, it gets, comes back here. So um, yes, I could, I could uh, break these down and, and think of them separately. And that's another way of simplifying the form to break things into uh, separate, uh, um, separate objects. But uh, the idea of breaking a complex form down into planes uh, is three-dimensionally is, is actually um, a really important concept that you understand because it's, again, it's how many sculptors uh, see, see space or um, um, start to understand the complexity of the world through a simplification of uh, a series of planes, a series of flat planes, right? And that's really the lesson that I'm trying to, to, to give you tonight. Does this make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, yeah, um, and there, thank you very much. There's nothing about the planes that I'm putting in that's that's uh, um, that's dictated. It's it's really the ones that I'm seeing. Now you could probably see other uh, planes, but uh, these are the most common ones. Uh, and but you could uh, you could adjust them if you want to, and and you can actually start to break down those planes. You know, uh, just because I have a big flat plane here, maybe I change it and break it here and um, and make it flatter here or come out over here. I could actually um, spend a lot of time making a thousand planes and that would give you a higher resolution to the to the uh, reality it's like having a, a jpeg that only has you know five pixels you start adding pixels to the jpeg and it gets higher and higher resolution but it's still just pixels right and so what we're doing is you could actually start adding more and more planes and get higher higher resolution but i'm not asking you to do that i'm asking you to kind of understand the entirety of this of the of the skull as a as a series of the biggest planes that you can find that brings the whole thing together. There's one all through here, right all through there. There's one for the cheekbone in there. There's another one here. I'm bringing the whole of that cavity, the kind of the face of that cavity, um, this right here to here, you know, and then another one, maybe another one flat in here. And if you can find like the biggest plane and bring a whole bunch of stuff together into that one plane that's that's kind of the game you're playing with it and the more you can do that believe it or not the more you'll understand this skull um, and the reason i say that is because the more you are actively looking to simplify and to simplify with fidelity the more you're being um critical you're doing critical thinking you're thinking how do i get this what how are these two things related how do i bring them all together how, you know is this long enough is that is that plane should i bring that plane out to to accommodate over here should i push it in to accommodate over there there's a thousand I ideas and thoughts and critical judgments that you're putting into that 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 makes this a very a difficult problem um, as well as a problem that that will um that will pull out the, the importance of the, the shapes of the skull. So um, I would say that, you know, this process, this process of finding these simplified planes in the skull um, is, a, is, is a way for you to uh, move ahead and to really understand the three-dimensional um, construction of that skull.
And again, you could use these planes or um, another plane. Remember, your skull is going to be is going to be slightly different. I think that um, this one was a female skull. I think female juvenile skull that I had modeled uh, here. Uh, but your skulls um, are, I believe, male. Both of the ones you have are both male skulls, adult male skulls. So uh, maybe your jaws end up uh, much wider. Uh, maybe you want to bring these forms up, and maybe yours ends up with a, another extra plane to, to join these two things together. Um, maybe the, um, there's a brow line on yours that, that is not really present on mine. You might see something a lot more like this, a flattening up here, right? Yeah, I think I have that on mine. Yeah. So um, you'll find your own. They'll be kind of close to this, but they're not always the same. All right, does that make sense? You guys have questions? 